am Amanda Keaton and I'm the general counsel at the foundation. So I love list of lists of lists because that's hilarious, but I also recently took a look at the Wikipedia article on Wikipedia and I was blown away at how true we stay to the sort of five pillars of Wikipedia and really talk about our own problems. Um, and it just made me smile and chuckle um, that we really hold ourselves to that same standard, um, you know, and level of criticality. And it, it, it felt fairly neutral to me. So uh, I, I, was, I was kind of shocked uh, to see that. And it was, I'm not shocked, I, w I, was, I was excited to see that. Um, and I thought, of course, of course, that's the way that it would be. So we protect and defend community members who are under attack because of their contributions to the movement. We also protect and defend the foundation from regulators who are trying to disrupt what we do often because they're trying to regulate big tech and we've simply become bycatch in that net of regulation, um, just like uh, dolphins in a tuna net, for example. Um, I also work with our communities when their systems and their processes are not sufficient to protect other community members. Some of my team members also try to build the capacities of people within the movement so that we are as leaderful as we need to be moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, two things, you know, come to mind and um, both of them I'm, I'm really proud of. So first with the passage of the Universal Code of Conduct, I was really excited that we worked with more than 1,500 Wikipedia volunteers um, from 19 different Wikipedia user groups representing over 30 different languages. That kind of participation at scale um, and the fact that the code of conduct applies universally to all of our projects was tremendous to see in action. So getting to work both with our board of trustees to pass that original trust and safety mandate, but then also getting to watch and participate in some of those calls for feedback from many of our communities was tremendous to witness. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I'm really proud of is the board governance reform project. I found it very, very inspiring that the board, a collection of very diverse individuals um, who could take the position that, uh, you know, they're doing a good enough job, that they're doing, you know, potentially even a great job. But even in that moment, looking for ways to be better, ways to be more representative of not only the communities that we have now, but also the other people who exist in the world that we want to join us. Um, was really a tremendous step and a tremendous um, commitment to the kind of diversity that we want to see within all of our communities of contributors. There are a few things that are new. I am really excited uh, that this year we will be working directly uh, with the folks who have been supporting movement strategy. And as the movement um, develops the recommendations around how to move forward um, in a strategic way, we are catching recommendations and we're trying to pair them with the right capacity and resources uh, on the founding side as well so that and breathe these things into life. So for me, the you know biggest example of that is the uh, recommendation to um, ensure equitable decision making, and the idea that the movement really needs to develop the right systems, processes, and structures to govern the movement writ large. 
And so I love the fact that uh, we will be working over the next year on governance and writing a movement charter, as well as eventually uh, seating a global council that can govern the movement matters and can share power more directly um, as a sort of centralized structure that exists outside of any, including the foundation, any entity um, currently exists in existence, including the foundation. And so I'm really seeing that as a shining example of um, the kind of strategies that we wanna see when they get ripe being supported um, by the foundation. And so that process is going to be really, really fun to watch. I think it's going to raise a lot of difficult questions. And in my view, it is the biggest opportunity for us to stay ahead of regulators um, and really prove up and support with the right kind of system structures and processes, the kind of governance that we need in order to avoid uh, becoming that bycatch in the net of regulation. Um, because you know governments are in some ways closing in. And so for us to really be able to take that power back and demonstrate that our movement is ready to tackle the challenges and there is a central way to coordinate um, with our communities is tremendously important. So I would say that almost everything, you know, that we do, all, all the aspects that I've, I've spoken about, whether it's uh, developing new leaders in, you know, our community development team or continuing to keep people safe and ensure that um, you know, we're not seeing the kinds of bad behavior that can drive good faith contributors away um, in trust and safety, or, it, you know, these uh, ongoing consultations with our communities about the Universal Code of Conduct or board governance. All of that work continues next year, in addition to our defensive community members, you know, our continued um, ensuring that uh, all of our practices in the foundation comply with the law, um, and then also keeping our eyes on the horizon for what's coming next and making sure that um, the new regulations and public policy that's out there really fits us. So all of that is still happening. What's really exciting for me to see is how some of this is now overlapping um, in, in really, really fun ways. So for example, there's been a, a real um, a real desire on the part of so many um, committed community members to develop the kind of skills that they need in order to be even more uh, or increasingly impactful community members. And so now we're able to put a finer point on the kind of development that we need in order to ensure that there's leadership moving forward for affiliates, chapters, user groups, and of course, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. So that's an example of where, you know, a community wish um, it is now really serving to help focus the work of our community development uh, department moving forward. And it's, you know, also bringing together some of the challenges that the board was seeing, you know, with really wanting to intentionally and inclusively expand, but wanting to do so in a way that would um, that would serve the foundation and serve the movement in the best manner possible um, and ensure that people are ready to run, um, you know, so that they're both being asked, but they're also being equipped with the skills needed in order to step into those roles of governance. Similarly, I would say with respect to uh, the governance of the movement writ large and the direction that public policy is going, I'm increasingly seeing laws that require us to deal with content in shorter and shorter time windows. And honestly, if you ask me what keeps me awake at night, it is this coming on the horizon and thinking about how hard it can be depending on the language, depending on the project, depending on volunteer involvement. Um, goodness gracious, if we ever get to go on vacations again, because you know we're able to really um, you know, put this pandemic moment behind us, volunteers may not be able to get something down in one hour or uh, 24 hours. And that's, that's where regulation is going. 
So I wanna make sure that we have the formal systems and structures of power to very easily, quickly, and efficiently coordinate with the movement when we do have a valid court order that says we have to take content down. Of course, we're always gonna push back when we can. You know, we believe in free expression um, and we really wanna uphold to the greatest extent possible the ability of our community to make those decisions because that's who we believe is best positioned. That is the secret sauce that makes this whole amazing experiment in human collaboration work. And so we want to keep that as strong as possible. And so finally to see um, the movement strategy and what we're seeing from a public policy perspective come together and, and really require the same sort of intervention and, and the same thing to be built, um, it makes my heart sing. And I just can't wait to roll up my sleeves and, and get down to this work in, in the next year in partnership with members of our movement who want to solve some of the same problems and, and others to be sure.